Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in Galatians by the Apostle Paul. We're going to look at uh, 2, 11 through 14, and uh, we're going to look at uh, Paul confronting and rebuking Simon Peter. Very important scripture. We'll look at the text, then we'll look at commentary by Martin Luther and R.C. Sproul, and then we'll look at the Greek and we'll use the Greek to summarize Paul's rebuke. Let's go to block one. When Simon Peter came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that by their hypocrisy even Barnabas was led astray. When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Simon Peter, in front of them all, You are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs. Obviously, this is a extreme hypocrisy on the part of Simon Peter, and Paul didn't pull punches. Paul rebuked him to his face. Let's go to block two and look at the commentary. And uh, it's always interesting to look at Martin Luther's commentary because he ties it in with his own situation. Paul paid no regard to the dignity or position of Simon Peter. He defended the truth of the gospel. He did it because of the cause of God, and only because of the cause of God. Without a heavenly vision, Simon Peter never would have gone to the house of Cornelius. Many other men of faith have fallen into sin. It wasn't only Simon Peter, Samson, David, we know of David, many Men of faith have failed. We've all fallen short of God's glory. We've all sinned. But I love this uh, statement. That we all have the same Christ, the same gospel, the same forgiveness, the same ordinances. I like that. I really like that from uh, Martin Luther. Grace. He really knew, He learned about faith and grace, didn't he? But we all have the same Christ, the same gospel, the same forgiveness, the same ordinances. Paul accuses Peter of a lack of principle, which endangered Christian liberty. Now here's, here's a, again, Martin Luther talking about the Catholic situation. Jerome, of the Catholic leadership, excused Peter's action wrongly on the ground that it was done in ignorance. Remember, Jerome translated the Latin Vulgate, and mistranslated the word repentance. He, uh, remember Jerome, uh, if you remember the Reformation, Jerome translated repentance, metanoia, he translated it as do penance to support the uh, Catholic Church practice of doing penance. It was an incorrect translation, and uh, later, it was corrected by the Reformation because metanoia in the Greek is repentance, not do penance. But in the Latin Vulgate, it was translated incorrectly to uphold the Catholic demand that uh, parishioners do penance. And so metanoia in the Greek was translated as do penance in the Latin Vulgate. And the translator was Jerome. But here's another weakness. Uh, Jerome excused Simon Peter's action. You know, the Catholic Church said that uh, Simon Peter, that Peter is the cornerstone of the church. He's the rock of the church. Martin Luther said no. Peter's confession of Jesus as the Christ is the true cornerstone of the church. It's the confession that Peter made that Jesus is the Christ. That is the cornerstone of the church. 
not the person, Peter. The Catholic Church said Peter is the cornerstone of the church. Martin Luther said no. Peter's confession that Jesus is the Christ, that confession is the foundation of the church, not the person, Peter, not the human being, Peter. The foundation of the church is Peter's confession that Jesus is the Christ. Martin Luther corrected the misinterpretation by the Catholic Church. Martin Luther said, no, Peter is not the cornerstone, not the foundation of the church, not the person Peter, but his confession that Jesus is the Christ that is the foundation of the church. And ever since then, the Protestant faith has followed Martin Luther's interpretation. But uh, Jerome tried to whitewash Simon Peter's sin. And, uh, and Martin Luther said, no, that's, it is not excusable. That is, he acted wrongly. He acted like a hypocrite. We cannot excuse what Peter did. Paul was correct in rebuking him. Martin Luther understood that this rebuke was called for. Jerome tried to wash it away. He excused Peter's action, wrongly excused Peter's action, saying oh, it was just a it was an act of ignorance. He's not a guilty person. He didn't deserve to be rebuked. Jerome wanted to whitewash it for the sake of the Catholic Church. Martin Luther said no. That is wrong. Jerome is wrong on that point. Let's go to R.C. Sproul. Simon Peter and Paul were the titans of the church. Paul's opposition to Peter was not concealed, but it was made public. Peter's vacillation was motivated by in being intimidated. And Simon Peter had already learned better in the house of Cornelius in Acts 10. But we do know from the remaining scriptures that the relationship between Simon Peter and Paul was repaired. Paul confronted Peter for his radical inconsistency regarding the freedom of the gospel. The rebuke was justified. Paul confronted Peter for his radical inconsistency concerning the freedom of the gospel. Martin Luther and R.C. Sproul, Sproul both say the rebuke was justified. Paul rightly rebuked Simon Peter. Jerome of the Catholic faith, translator of the Latin Vulgate, tried to excuse Peter of any wrongdoing, and that was incorrect. Let's go to the Greek, and uh, what I did here is this time, instead of a, looking at every single line, I, took, I did a word study. And what we're going to do in block three is we're going to look at uh, Paul criticized Simon Peter and the delegation from Jerusalem of the following four criticisms. It's four word studies from verse 11, 12, 13, and 14. In 211, Paul said they were existing as condemned. In verse 12, upastelo phobeo. They were drawing back in fear and intimidation. 2.13, soon hupokrinomai. They acted like hypocrites. They played a, fast, a false role. 2.14, orthopodeo. They did not walk in a straight and um, upright way. So I did four word studies there for you to kind of organize the uh, rebuke. The rebuke had four parts. Paul's rebuke of Simon Peter and the delegation. Remember, this rebuke was for the delegation against Jerusalem and for Simon Peter both. He was rebuking the Judaizers and Simon Peter. And it was a four-point rebuke. They were existing as condemned. They were drawing back in fear and intimidation. They acted like hypocrites. They played a false role. They were not walking in the straight and narrow, upright way of following Jesus Christ. It was a four-point rebuke. 
uh, against Simon Peter and the Judaizers from Jerusalem. That's the key. It was a four-point rebuke. And so I did a four-point word study there for you in block three. Kata nos menas, hupastelo fobeo, sun hupacrinamai, orthopodeo. There's your four word, there's your four Greek word study on the four point rebuke of Simon Peter and the Judaizers by Paul the Apostle. Now, quickly, in the commentary, I'm going to bring up. Martin Luther again, because I think it's important that we look at uh, what happened with regard to the Reformation. You know, that's why we're pulling Martin Luther in here, so we can look at uh, the time of Paul the Apostle, but we can also look at the, the time of the Reformation and Martin Luther. And I think it's a good point in that uh, statement about uh, uh, one sub point I. Jerome, of the Catholic leadership, tried to excuse Peter's action wrongly. He was wrong in doing so, but he tried to excuse Peter's action on the ground that it was done in ignorance. This is the same Jerome that mis and mistranslated the Greek New Testament and translated metanoia repentance as do penance in order to support the Catholic practice of requiring parishioners to do penance. And, of course, it was a wrong interpretation. It was corrected later. It was corrected later. Uh, during the Reformation, it was corrected. And metanoia was properly translated as repentance. Metanoia, change of mind. Metanoia, repentance. It is not do penance. Jerome mistranslated the Greek New Testament. The Latin Vulgate was wrong. The Latin Vulgate continues to be wrong when it translates metanoia as do penance. Metanoia is literally change of mind. Metanoia, change of mind. It is translated repentance, Re not do penance. It's translated it is correctly translated repentance. Jerome's Latin Vulgate was wrong. The Reformation correctly translated metanoia and corrected Jerome. But it's interesting that Jerome also tried to uh, completely excuse Simon Peter's uh, hypocrisy. Oh, he just did that in ignorance. We can excuse him. No, we cannot. He acted as a hypocrite. He did not stand firm for the freedom in Jesus Christ. And Paul was justified in criticizing Simon Peter. Paul, was, Paul the Apostle was absolutely justified in criticizing and rebuking Simon Peter the Apostle. And the rebuke contained four points. Simon Peter and the Judaizers were existing as condemned, drawing back in fear and intimidation, acting like hypocrites, playing a false role, not walking in a straight and an upright way. Block 3 gives you a four-point word study of the four-point rebuke of Simon Peter by the Apostle Paul. That's going to wrap up 2, 11 through 14. Next time it'll be 215 through 18. Next time 215 through 18. That's going to wrap up uh, the lesson on the rebuke of the apostle Simon Peter by the apostle Paul.